are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of the You and Your Doctor show. But we're going to change things up a little bit this evening and talk a little bit about healthcare architecture, which is so important nowadays in South Florida with all that's going on and the changing of healthcare and um, different places to access healthcare across our uh, great portion of the state here. So without further ado, I want to welcome Charles A. Michelson of Salt Michelson Architects, an, an award-winning architectural firm out of, I know you're off Griffin Road. Is out it of a, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Thank you, Charles. So welcome to the program. How are you doing this evening? Doing great. Thank you for inviting me here. And thank you for making the drive up. We actually have a lot of doctors, nurse practitioners, CEOs come on to the show from Fort Lauderdale. It's not too bad of a drive this time of the day, so I sure. appreciate you coming up to our studios here in Boca, but like I said, we're uh, we're we're on um, uh, globally on the iHeartRadio app, and in South Florida, Fort Lauderdale up to um, into Palm Beach County as well. So I wanted to ha- have you on the show because you have a very um, unique certification. I am going to get to that in a minute. It's called ACHA, and and I'm going to let you That's explain it. But first, I wanted to um, start out a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about um, healthcare architecture and how it can help to transform healthcare through um, uh, better built environments. Okay. Well, I'm sure you know from interviewing physicians that there's a wide variety of healthcare services that are out there. Uh, in order for those to be successful, they need to take place in a well designed facility. Uh, I believe that a well designed facility has a positive impact upon clinical outcomes. It has a positive impact upon the families that bring patients to facilities. It has a positive impact upon the health care providers, the physicians, the nurses, the practice managers who work day and day in health care facilities. So that all is part of the work that I do, create that environment for them to service the public. Very important aspect of the whole health care um, environment landscape there. Now, um, why is it important to choose a healthcare architect that's experienced and certified? And I, I will get to the ACHA question, yeah. I promise. I'm like teasing okay. here. <laughs> that's but, um, right. Why is it important to have someone who's experienced and certified who's done, you know, um, hospital build outs or urgent sure. care centers? Healthcare design is very specialized. There needs to be a, a very deep understanding of what is occurring within the facility, of the patients that are being treat- treated, the physicians, the, the equipment that's uh, being used, the technology that's going into it. You can understand that the design of an ER, emergency room now, has to create atmosphere in case somebody's contagious, that they don't give that uh, disease off to somebody else. Uh, The design of surgery suites uh, that have robots in them and some of them that don't have robots in them. Uh, The design of any area within the hospital itself needs an understanding of how that treatment needs to be applied the disease that uh, being uh, treated, and then obviously the desire of the staff in the hospital itself. Is it this patient-centered care? Is it family-centered care? Uh, is it in the hospital? Is it outside the hospital? And the understanding of the entire picture allows you to be more successful. That's a great point about infectious diseases because uh, I remember a couple of years ago, Ebola, and then um, I was um, recently in a hospital. I actually had to take uh, my daughter to a um, pediatric hospital and I saw those um, rooms where um, you know they use them for infectious diseases and, and whatnot and uh, quarantine rooms that's what I'm getting to Isol- I mean isolation isolation rooms. that's a better way of saying it now correct right but uh, it was amazing and it, it opened my eyes and I was really happy to see that that hospital 
had that um type of um right. you know environment in case of sure an outbreak of something so that that's a really great point and you were telling me when we were talking a little bit in the lobby like some of the older hospitals and we don't really think about it um for hurricane structure they were built you know in the 50s and 60s and i know a lot of hospitals in south florida that i i deal with were, right weren't built in this last few decades so i do a lot of work modernizing old facilities Buildings built in the 60s and 70s understand that uh, uh, they had fax machines uh, and most of the, the equipment that's in a hospital today didn't even exist back then. An MRI was an exotic machine back in the 50s and 60s. There, maybe there were three or four in the entire state. Now it's how many are in each hospital that you go to. So um, working to modernize the facilities, working to bring power, more power to the facilities, uh, working to have Wi-Fi access. Even within the last 10 years, if you think about it, uh, medical records were all in paper files and big rolling racks. And now, 10 years later, it's almost 95, 98% electronic medical records. So existing older facilities are constantly evolving, and we're constantly uh, changing the design, so uh, we're providing the patients with the best possible care even in facilities that have been around for a few years. And that's so important, I'll tell you, working in these facilities on a day-to-day -day basis. We're here with Charles A. Michelson. He's A1A certified, ACHA certified, LEAD AP certified from SALTS Michelson Architects. They're a Fort Lauderdale award-winning architectural firm, um, a leader in the region as well. Charles, I wanted to ask you because one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the program was one of those credentials right there. It's ACHA, and that's the American College of Healthcare Architects. I haven't seen that a lot. I had to do my research on that that's one. That's correct. Are, are you, that's very unique to have that kind of uh, title. And Yes, and it is. Uh, the, the college uh, provides board certification for healthcare architects. And what that means is... Um, you provide them with a portfolio of your work, and then after you're accepted to sit for the exam, you sit and do board certifications, basically demonstrating that you have a complete depth of experience and knowledge of the healthcare field, so you'll be a more successful healthcare designer. And um, there are only about 450 in the United States and Canada, and right now, as far as I know, there are only 28 or 30 in Florida itself. I think I'm the only practicing one in South Florida. Wow, the only one. Wow, that's great. And that is that is huge. So um, we have a booklet, and um, it's from Salt Mich Michelson Architects, your architectural Correct. firm. And I was just looking through here. Um, you've done some work um, at um, Midtown Del Rey MOB, which is right around the corner. Um, surgery centers as well. One of them I'm flipping to right now, Memorial Urgent Care. That was a, a huge project for you as well in Hollywood. Correct. So um, urgent care centers, rehabilitation institutes, um, one that you really like to talk about when we're in the, the green room there, interventional radiology as correct. well. And that's at Memorial in Hollywood as that's well. Correct. So you've, you, you have the experience, you have the certification. Um, that's great news for um, health care in South Florida. Thank you. Um, again, as I indicated, there's a great diversity of projects and project types when it comes to medicine. A lot of projects are inside the hospital, but more and more we're building facilities outside the hospital. Um, basically, medicine has changed to be able to bring medicine into the community where the people are, uh, to decompress emergency rooms. There are more walk-in clinics and urgent care facilities so people can uh, have a place to go when they have you don't want to call them standard problems, but uh, ones that are not as critical that would require an emergency room. So by decompressing and bringing medicine uh, to the community, people are able to get better care. And the ultimate goal of that is to keep people out of the hospital um, because hospital stays are very expensive. If you have a problem and you can be treated uh, quicker, uh, while it's a minor problem instead of a major problem, you're able to be treated, it's less expensive for the patient to do it in the community, and long term, you won't need to go into the hospital, which is the goal of everybody. And we've seen that lately with hospital groups building the urgent care centers. I know um, uh, Tenet has done it. I know Holy Cross does. I drive by these uh, urgent care centers that they have, uh, or uh, emergency centers, they call right. them, I think, as well. 
And I'm just flipping through this book that I mentioned. So um, Senior Emergency Room at North Shore Medical Center in Miami. I read an article about that when that came out. Correct. You designed that as well. Women's Center at North Shore Medical Center. Um, St. Mary's Medical Center, the wound care facility, was uh, designed by Salts Michelson Architects, the Surgical Special Care Unit at St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach. It just goes on and on. So, um, And again, that indicates the the degree of specialty that goes into the design of uh, medical facilities now. Uh, ER, for example, for seniors, understanding the needs of senior citizens versus the average person that will come to an ER, we're able to adjust the design, to, again, to have a better clinical outcome for the patient, make it a more comfortable setting, understanding what the needs are to geriatrics, to the point of the flooring that we put down, making sure it's less slip resistant than something else so a person might not slip uh, at all or being cognizant of what's happening around them trying to have them access to a window or a clock so they can tell time uh, when it comes to a wound care that's a very specialized type of uh, place for people with wounds that need to be treated on an ongoing basis so it's a, a sterile environment it's not an emergency situation but again it's an outpatient type facility for a hospital where people come in are treated and then leave. So it's in its own department, it has its own access, um, it has a sterile environment for those people so infections don't spread because uh, those people are the most vulnerable. And again, understanding the medical treatment that people have is a requirement for a healthcare architect so they can more successfully design the space for them. And that is so important. We've actually had from wound care centers um, a specialist from the hyperbaric chambers Correct. on the program from um, you know Delray Medical Center and, and Florida Medical Center if I'm not mistaken as well and once again I see you viewing on uh, Facebook live um, listen on the radio if you have any questions um, for Charles um, we'll be here till 630 or ask me a question there on the uh, the Facebook live stream page and if it's appropriate I'll definitely get it on the air so um, once again, I want to mention your info, Charles uh, Michelson, ACHA, A1A, Lead AP with Salts, Michelson Architects. They're out of Fort Lauderdale, but um, cover all of South Florida as well. SaltsMickelson.com, 954-266-2700, and I'll give out that information as well. So I mentioned South Florida, but you're a regional architectural firm, right? We've worked in projects from Orlando to Tampa. Uh, recently worked on something in Sarasota. So again, um, our range is, is the bottom half of Florida. Nice. That's uh, We worked that's in the great. Keys. Uh, we're actually uh, architects for uh, Key West. Okay. So, so we, we, we travel around the area. That's yeah, not a problem. And South Florida is, is always growing. We know that's that correct. living here as well. Um, now, how can your firm help um, with in-hospital projects? Because I know I mentioned it before, but um, you've seen to do a lot. So these are existing hospitals. Some of them built, I mean, St. Mary's, that must be dating a, a few years back. St. Mary's is actually uh, in the 20s started as a, a, a convent, I, I believe. That's right. And I've been in parts of that hospital where the nuns used to stay up in, in areas that obviously aren't being used for hospital care. But it, it talks about the longevity of a building and how it needs to adapt and expand in health care. So part of the work that goes into analyzing existing facilities is seeing if we can uh, have a functional program for, uh, let's say, a dialysis unit needs to be developed in a certain area of a hospital. Uh, there, there are facility guidelines that provide the standards, and then there's a functional program where the hospital specifically des describes the treatment that's going to occur in the facility and then you work with the clinicians and you work with the technical people, uh, the people who provide the dialysis equipment and making sure that it can fit into the facility, the space requirements, the life safety requirements, the, all plans that uh, are developed for a hospital need to go through ACA, uh, the state agency for plans and review to make sure they comply with those life ACA, safety so requirements. Important there. That's correct. And we have a wonderful relationship with them and we're able to speak to them about existing facilities and how we can mitigate requirements and then how we meet the requirements of the code and using different techniques that we have uh, you know, available to us uh, as part of the design process. 
It's an important decision when um, making, you know, a changes to existing health care facility or um, plans for a new one, and we have an expert um, health care architect here. Um, Charles, hold that thought. We're going to take a, a quick break. I'm going to ask you on the other side about um, some of your products, uh, projects outside of health care on the You and Your Doctor show. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954 717 7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out of pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care Inc. at 954 717 7027. License 20099096. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At Old County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome back to the show. We're talking healthcare architecture this evening. Very important um, part of healthcare in South Florida with Charles Michelson. He's uh, ACHA certified, the American College of Healthcare Architects with Salt Michelson architecture firm as well so um like i said we're on facebook live all the time if you ever want to see this show check out all county Healthcare incorporated's facebook page or their website you can always go back to the show if you missed anything and we're actually getting um some some questions from um viewers so i uh, a big shout out to charles felix south florida hospital news and Healthcare report great uh, monthly newspaper. They do great monthly uh, meetings. South Florida, where different vendors uh, working in healthcare meet, and it's actually the reason I have Charles on the show because I met um, his um, colleague here, Aaron Ladd, who's in the studio as well. We met at a South Florida Hospital uh, healthcare okay, working group meeting. Uh, so, an excellent organization. Uh, I'm on the board of directors of it. Been a member for must be a decade now. Uh, a very important organization discussing the global issues of healthcare in South Florida. It is great. I just wait for it to come out every month. I always grab the printed copy. I'd love mm-hmm. I'm an old newspaper great. guy, so um, to where I started, and I just love to have it in my hands. Great. So Charles actually asked a question. Uh, Charles Felix, that is, how has this firm um, help hospitals prepare for hurricanes in the past? Um, we've worked with ho- older facilities. Uh, constructed prior to uh, uh, the 90s when we had Hurricane Andrew come for, uh, through and the hurricane codes really came up to speed as what they needed to be for Florida, uh, hardening existing facilities. One of the most interesting projects I was involved with was Hurricane Hardening Memorial Regional Hospital in Hollywood. Now that hospital, the first building was constructed in the 1950s and had additions put onto it in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s so that it really became a campus of over a million square foot of multiple buildings all tied together, none of which was hurricane hardened. So the, the process we ended up doing is literally encapsulating the existing hospital and office buildings with a new skin 
had new glass that was impact resistant to meet the requirements of the code while the building remained in operation without losing any patient days. There were 19 phases of construction and sometimes in a hospital what you do is not as difficult as how you go about doing it and that was certainly one of those projects. But uh, we harden and secure generators, we harden and secure oxygen tank farms and anything else that's in or around the hospital to make sure that those facilities stay in operation not only during a storm but in those critical uh, times after a storm uh, that everybody can work out and that they're ready to treat the public if, God forbid, somebody needs the hospital facility. And that must have took some expert planning to keep that hospital open because, like you said, bottom line is hospitals, they are a business as well, and, you know, they have to um, still make their bottom line. Sure. So that's huge, and you guys are expert planners at Salt's uh, Michelson Architects. Now, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about new technologies in the in the architectural world. I know healthcare is a is a big focus um, for you, for your group, but also you you do um, um, specialize in other areas of um, architecture Correct. as well. We're a full service firm. Um, we work in all areas of architecture. My firm is twenty six people. I have seven registered architects. So while my area of specialty is medical. Uh, we work on so shopping centers. We work on social service facilities. Uh, for Broward County, we just uh, finished a Broward Addiction Recovery Center, which is a 50-bed inpatient facility along with outpatient facilities for uh, addiction recovery. And the other side of the spectrum, we're working on a, a Broward Transit Facility, a bus depot in Lauderhill. Um, we do pretty much everything except uh, custom homes. Um, I've done those in the past, and there were just too many fights between husbands and wives in front of me, so I decided that's an area of architecture I'll stay away from for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Good move. Yeah. <laughs> we're glad you made that move. And I'm glad about Delray Place. I drive by it every day. I am a customer at the Trader Joe's there. This right. is at Linton and Federal, if you haven't been over there. Habit Burger Grill. Mm -hmm. Love that place as well. And there, there's an example of taking a, an older shopping center and modernizing it and then adding to the existing center to create something larger and better for the community. The uh, Harvest Grill, I've been out to uh, dinner with doctors correct. there. Yeah, they very nice. They love eating there. They eat healthy, yeah. and that's the, that's the place in uh, Delray right. to eat healthy. Well, one of the things about architecture is, uh, that's so appealing to me is the diversity of the type of project that you work on. Uh, one day I'm in a surgery suite working on something there, and the next day I'm figuring out how to design a restaurant or a bar or something else. And then another time, it's a completely different kind of facility. Uh, it's, uh, I'm actually working with uh, uh, Ammo in Dania Beach, which trains merchant marinas. And here we're working on a um, fire recovery facility, how to work in extinguishing fires on a ship should it occur. And we're building that kind of facility. And we actually worked on um, G-Star um, High School, uh, which is a movie studio which is the most modern movie studio uh, on this side of the United States, sits on that uh, school campus, and movies are produced there and shows are produced there as well. I'm familiar with G-Star as well, Palm Beach County. Um, we're here with Charles Michelson, A1A, ACHA, lead AP certified architect with Salt's Michelson Architects, and uh, works on a lot of pro uh, projects, and I can just tell by your, your passion um, and just seeing some of these designs and and actually everything coming to fruition. Um, just some amazing work here, Charles, Great. as well. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, kind of go back a little bit to uh, health care, and I know we mentioned this earlier in the show. I'm seeing um, a lot of uh, walk-in clinics, and not just from, um, I'm not talking about the MD Nows, I'm also talking about, um, you know, the ones that hospital groups are building as well. Have, have you seen that model um, really growing sure. across South Florida? It is. It's growing not only in South Florida, but throughout the country. And you have different levels. There might be a walk-in clinic. You would have an urgent care facility that might be able to treat something a little bit more urgent than a walk-in clinic. And now uh, you're seeing freestanding emergency rooms pop up. And a freestanding emergency room is designed to the same level that a hospital emergency room is designed. So again, decompress the hospital campus, provide people with health care, uh, access um, where they are in the community based upon what their needs are.
Thanks for explaining that again. It's hard to believe we only have two minutes, so I'm going to go into the lightning round. Okay. How did you get into architecture? Uh, I had, uh, uh, I just loved architecture and the art form, the ability to be creative and do that for a living and have such a positive impact upon people's lives and be able to see the work that you do every day when you drive past it on the street. Mention some of those new technologies, tools that you're using. You mentioned them before. But. Right. In the office now, uh, we use Revit and building information modeling. Uh, basically, we're able to create the building in three dimensions instead of two dimensions. And that tool stays with the building in perpetuity so that everything that goes into the building is documented. So when an elevator needs to be serviced, you'll get an alert. Uh, literally everything in the building uh, becomes documented for long-term care. Fantastic. we got about 45 seconds. So I promise I get this question. What, what's your hobby and passion outside of architecture? My hobby is I, I do bonsai. I've practiced that for 25 years. Those are, you know, the Japanese trees in a pot. Uh, I've had trees on display at Epcot, and there's a Broward uh, Societies of Florida, Bonsai Societies of Florida. Uh, that's an organization I belong to, and, and, and it's a wonderful stress relief hobby to participate in. That's awesome. Thank you, Charles, for all the information and all you do for healthcare architecture. I'd love to have you back on Thank the program. You. I'd love to be back. At saltsmichelson.com. Check them out, and we'll see you next time on the You and Your Architect show. We Thank changed you. it. <laughs>